here and today I'd like to show you Glen Canyon Bridge and Dam. Now normally I would actually talk and be in the videos uh, making the video but unfortunately most of the work I did was right next to a freeway, well a highway, and I didn't get very much good audio for it. So I'm going to narrate this one. So without too much more delay, let's get into the video. The dam was constructed in 1956 and was considered as early as 1924, but at the time Hoover Dam was considered more important. So Glen Canyon Dam was set on the back burner for a while. The dam itself took about 10 years to build and cost the American taxpayers at the time approximately $135 million. Translated into modern day numbers here in 2021, as far as I can tell it would cost approximately $1,306,000,000. I do not believe that number to be a true representation since tax, labor, and safety laws have changed so much, not to mention the increased cost for the materials to construct something like Glen Canyon Dam. Suffice to say, in my opinion, it would cost a lot more than $1,306,000,000 to build. Now that is just my opinion. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Coincidentally, Glen Canyon Bridge cost $4 million, which is about $37,440,000 adjusted for today's inflation. It was finished in 1959 and took about two years to build. Interestingly enough, the dam's reservoir was not filled until 1980. It took about 17 years for the reservoir to fill to capacity. However, there's a dark lining to this story. You may find it interesting that the primary point of the dam was not for electricity, and electricity was considered a byproduct. The dam was designed to control the Colorado River and bring some level of stability to it. Many places, places suffered from issues caused by the river's flooding, and many subsidiary uses for the Colorado were cut off during droughts. Irrigation for farming and the ability to move on the river would primarily suffer. The point of the dam was to alleviate this and stabilize the river so that it would no longer flood, and so that during times of drought the river could rely on the dam's massive reservoir to keep the Colorado River full. To this extent the dam does its job rather well, but back to that dark lining of the story. In 1980, the reservoir was full and dam, dam operations found out that there was a lot of money to be made by cutting costs and selling power. Everything was fine until 1983. In 1983, the commission that ran the dam made some very bad decisions. These decisions were probably based on greed and the commission that controlled the dam seemed to forget the primary purpose of the dam and were really focused on that byproduct of the dam. In 83, the commission decided to keep the reservoir at maximum capacity during the winter months, something that is not spoken about very often. They tried to use the flood water during the spring months to make extra electricity, in other words, extra money. Most dams leave part of the reservoir empty in case of flooding or an abnormal amount of water intake for some reason or another. The amount of how empty a reserve needs to be can change depending on the time of the year. In the case of Glen Canyon Dam, this flooding reserve is made during the winter months as the water that powers the Colorado River is still just snow in the mountains. It is to be expected that it will melt off during the spring and refill the reservoir. Every projection for that year indicated that the water flow would exceed 100% and the commission that ran the dam knew this. Furthermore, the projections were nowhere close to accurate as the water flow in the reservoir actually exceeded almost 200%. It is debated, but it is generally believed that the commission that ran the dam knew about this but took the chance it would not flood that much. However, when the water came and the reservoir was already full, it had nowhere to go. Because of this, the overflow tunnels known as spillways at the dam were open. This did not keep up with the amount of water that was still coming into the dam. Oh, well, to be more exact, the dam's reservoir. So much so that wooden boards were erected on top of the dam to hold the water back from flowing over the top of it, which would have destroyed the dam. The wooden boards were a last-ditch effort to save the dam, and the water exceeded the dam by about four inches. By some miracle, they did work, and they did save the dam. If anything, it really is a miracle the dam is still standing. The spillways were severely damaged during this process. Even though it was stated they were designed to handle this type of scenario, it was obvious even before they were used they could never handle this much water, at least not without taking some damage. Suffice to say they were severely damaged, way more than the news reported at the time, but they did work. In hindsight, we know that in an effort to save money, the commission did not use the spillways correctly and decided not to follow the procedure for the tunnels that included required maintenance during operation. This is because the engineers who built 
the, the tunnels, they knew about this problem. It was known that if the maintenance was performed and procedure followed that the overflow tunnels may have well endured with minimal damage. However, it is possible that if they were not ran as hard as they were, the dam would have been overtaken with the amount of water it was dealing with. After all, the water did surpass the dam by 4 inches. So ultimately, I'll leave you with a choice of who was right or wrong. Without getting into too much detail, the river flooded below the dam and a lot of bad things happened. Fortunately though, nothing catastrophic. The point I'm trying to make here is even though the dam works as intended, some really bad decisions almost destroyed it, and who knows how catastrophic the damage, damage would have been if it had failed, but it did not fail. The bridge and dam were named after Glen Canyon, which should come as no surprise. However, early blueprints of the bridge indicate it was going to be called the Colorado River Bridge. If you think about it, that would not make a lot of sense seeing as how the bridge is in Arizona. Glen Canyon itself was named by John Wesley Powell, who originally surveyed the canyon in 1869. Suffice to say, the reservoir that the dam created was named after him, Lake Powell. Interestingly enough, before the dam, there was little to nothing in this area. In just about every way, Glen Canyon Dam also founded the nearby city of Page, which, in around, which is around a mile away, maybe even less. The workers of the dam required to build it settled the town, and the reservoir it created enabled the town to survive as Lake Powell attracts a crazy amount of tourists, vacationers, off-road enthusiasts, and people like me, boaters. Currently, as of April 2021, the lake is super low, at 133 feet low. In other words, Lake Powell is only 42% full. I think it's important to remember that it will take at least 7 plus years for that to change if things were ideal. Unfortunately, lake levels have been dropping for over 20 years now, and it doesn't bode well for the future. This year, the lake is expected to break the record for how low it will get. Best case projections show around 35% full. It is being considered that the dam may no longer be able to operate by the end of 2022, and hydroelectric operations will have to be shut down. It is, also, it is so bad that when I went to the marina to check it out, I spoke with one of the managers as I noticed several docks were not accessible due to low water. He informed me that it had become such a problem that they were planning on moving the whole marina further into the lake. For the first time since the lake was formed, all of the lower attributaries are implementing drought control measures and are going to start feeling the pain that the people of Page and the surrounding areas have been feeling for years. I find it ironic that the property I'm currently living on is in a town called Big Water, a town with no water. Since the lake has dropped so much, the water receded away from here a long time ago. Maybe Lake Powell was doomed from the start, or maybe things will get better. It is impossible to say, but I know this much. I plan on enjoying everything the lake has to offer, and I hope to take you along for the ride. So without any more conversation, this is Thor, signing out.